Tucker, I've got a million book ideas. They're all great. Which one should I write? No, they're not How do all I great. Choose? I've heard them. Many of them are terrible. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> one of the most common questions we get from authors is, I know I want to write a book, but I don't know which book idea I should choose. We get this a lot, right? From authors who come to us, a lot of times they think they have one idea and they try and put all their ideas into one, or they think they have multiple book ideas, and they do. And they don't know how to pick the right one or how to frame their idea. And so we're gonna go through the three methods that we use with our authors to get them to the right book. Let's talk about the first one, the scribe method, in choosing a book idea. How does that work? All right, so the scribe method is the, the, the common one that we use for most of our clients, and we do prescriptive nonfiction for the most part, which basically means I have a set of knowledge and wisdom I wanna share with other people to help them. Then what we've found uh, is basically it's three questions you ask yourself. The first one is both what do I want my audience to get and what do I want to get? Basic answers are to something like I want my, my audience to learn how to do X, right? I want them to, to learn how to apply X and how to use X in their career, whatever your topic is. Now, once you start talking about what you want, People who understand how the world works, they, they have pretty basic goals. Like, I want to increase my credibility and authority. I want to uh, bring new leads into my business. I have hooks for visibility for media. Help other people. I want to create an impact. A book can help you do a ton of things. There's also unreasonable things like, right, I'm going to be on Oprah and I'm going to be a star and all these sorts of things. Sell a million copies. Right. Sell a million copies. I, I, it's possible. Like, we've helped people like Tiffany Haddish and David Goggins sell millions of copies, but it's very, very unlikely. Anyway, that's just reasonable versus unreasonable goals. But the point is, you need to understand what you want your readers to get from your book and what you want to get. So that's your objectives, that's number one. Number two is, who's your audience, right? Who are you trying to talk to? What do you know that's gonna be appealing to, to a certain group of people? Who are those people, right? So for example, if you're a senior engineer, right, a software engineer, and you know how to manage your career so you become, you know, from junior to regular to, man uh, to senior to manager to even executive level, and you want to write a book like The Engineer's Guide to Career Growth because you've done it, fantastic. Like that's, then your audience are junior or mid-level engineers who are trying to grow their career. I feel like this is an area that a lot of people screw up. They try and boil the ocean, right? No, my book is for everybody. Yeah, yeah, right. If you think your book's for everybody, you're wrong. The Bible's not even for everybody. You want your audience to be as niche and narrow as possible, which I know is counterintuitive to most people. So the more narrow you can make your audience, the better your book's gonna be because you have less competition and they're gonna be way easier to understand and thus write a good book for and to market to because they're gonna be concentrated. You had, you had a really smart way of doing this for your first book. You wrote it to real people that you knew. Yeah, right, of Your course. friends, and Tim Ferriss did this too. Like, it, it, when you talk about niche, I think it's easy to still have that be a faceless audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you addressed actual people. Well, so, so again, this is in the, uh, if you really uh, want to dive into to audience, go to the audience. We have a whole video on audience, a whole blog post. Is we'll like, link it. What I do is I take an, and we, we teach our authors to do, uh, is to essentially create an avatar. If it can be a real person, that's better. If you know a 26-year-old girl who works in PR in New York City, but secretly just wants to be a stay-at-home mom and, and doesn't want to be working, but she doesn't know how to, how to navigate that, that divide, then write it to her, just to her. And uh, if you nail her, then by definition, it's gonna hit almost everyone in, in, that she's like in that audience. So then the third part of the scribe method is the idea. What are you gonna say and why is the audience gonna care? So because once you know, here's what I wanna get and here's what I wanna give to my audience, here's who my audience are, why are they gonna care? So you've gotta have an idea that appeals to that niche audience so that they will engage it, read it, and then if they read it, that gets you the objective you want, which is notoriety, authority, visibility, uh, leads for your business, whatever it is. See how that chain makes sense? That's that's the basic scribe method for finding an idea. It works really, really well for nonfiction, prescriptive, business, personal development type books. That's what it's optimized for. So if that's what you're writing a book for, 
that method is probably going to be the one where you find a really good idea. So the why will they care the last step, I feel like that's an easy one to screw up too because a lot of authors care about an idea of theirs right now and don't actually know if the audience is going to care. What they do is they say, well, the audience should care. And it's like, no one, that doesn't work. One of the phrases we like to use in helping people understand the idea is that you can't sell people something they're supposed to want. You can only sell them something they want. Now, you may deliver them something they need, right? Which is usually the best way to do it. There's so many examples of this with, uh, with books. I'll give you a, like a really, really good one. Every leader, every uh, CEO, every C-level executive, and really every manager knows that they want to be better at leadership, just about all of them. It's really easy to sell people on you need to be a better leader. But one of our authors is doing a book uh, that is essentially how, why leaders need to be in therapy and why being ther in therapy is the key to being a better leader and how to do that, right? But they know that selling a leader on going into therapy probably isn't gonna work. So they, they sell them, here's how to be a better leader. What they give them is a process that essentially puts, it's not tricking them, because they tell them, they're very clear, but it walks them through how to get what they want, great leadership, the path, is a therapeutic process. So you talk about the transformation and not the method itself. The second method is called the teach the pain you solve method. Who were you five or 10 years ago? Who were you then? What did you need to hear to help you get where you were trying to go or know what you were trying to know? Uh, this is the, a basic sort of um, reverse hero's journey frame. You've been on, on, a, on a hero's journey. You started in a certain place you went through some trials and struggles, you slayed a metaphorical dragon, uh, you learned something from that, and now you have that knowledge, right? And, that, and there's other people who are back where you used to be. And those people need or would like that knowledge. Imagine that you started off in a dark cave, right? And that you it took you a long time, but you finally found a path out, and it was difficult and struggles, and you, you got your way out, and now you're out in the sunlight and everything's fantastic, right? What about the people that are back there still? What could you write down and send back to them? Like, let's, you can't go back and pull them out, right? You gotta come out of the cave on your own. But what instructions, what knowledge, what wisdom, what inspiration can you send back to those people that they can read to help them start their journey and get out of the cave either quicker or better or at all? What did I need? for a prior version of myself is a fantastic way to find the idea inside of you, especially for memoirs. It works so well is because so many people don't see value in their story unless they see their story as being the instruction for someone else. What we like to tell people is that your pain can become the map for someone else. Go read the reviews of Tiffany Haddish's book on Amazon you can't read three pages of those and not start crying. Every page has at least a couple. Like a 16-year-old black girl is like, I had no idea that I could get out. I had no idea I could be Tiffany Haddish. I had no idea these people that I worship started where I started. Tiffany sent a map back to the kids that are where she was when she started. And that was, I mean, that's, that we talked about this. I'm like, she didn't want to talk about her husband um, you know, forcing her to get an abortion or beating her or all that. She didn't want to talk about any of that. And I just told her, I'm like, look, what did 16 year old Tiffany need to hear? And she's like, fuck. And so she said, all right. And so she, I mean, she opened up and she showed up man, and, and it worked. She sent a map back to how to get out. And it, and it has absolutely worked. And she has changed the lives of tens, hundreds of thousands of people because she was willing to go to that space. So we went on quite a, a dive here about, uh, about ideas, but it, it's, it, it comes around to, if you're willing to go into the hard parts and the difficult parts of what you had to face five or 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, that's an amazing book idea almost always.
And the third and final method is called the cocktail party pitch method. What is this about? Let's paint this scenario. So imagine you're with a bunch of people who are your exact ideal audience and you're at a cocktail party, right? So there's a bar there. and Now imagine you're the, like literally the avatar reader is talking to another avatar reader and one of them's read your book and they loved it and they implemented it and it worked. What do they say to the other person who's an ideal reader to get them to read the book. Authors will say something like, oh, this author's a genius and the book's amazing, you should totally read it. No one says that, that's not how people talk. Because what think, why do people share? The reason they're gonna share is because it makes them look good, raises their status. Then the question becomes, how do they share, right? And the, no, one sh no one is gonna use your marketing copy to talk about your book. No one does that because it makes it sound fucking weird, right? And they said, this book is a, an amazing parable of love and loss set against a backdrop of the romance. Shut up, no one says that. You'd punch someone in the face if they said that to you, right? It's they a real like, page turner. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine saying the words page turner to another person at a cocktail party? So the way you're gonna talk is like a normal person. You're gonna talk about what was the main benefit you got from the book, right? And then you're gonna talk about it in a short, concise way, right? So you wanna do some examples? No. Yeah, yeah, let's do a couple of examples. So All right, so we'll, we'll do David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me. But the way I would talk about David Goggins' book is something like, Dude, this, is the, this guy is literally the toughest man in the world, but he talks about how his dad beat his ass and how he was this fat loser and how he overcame it. It was incredibly inspiring, I've already started working out again and doing this other stuff because of it, you should totally read it. And then I'd probably say something like, Rogan had him on three times and he spent three hours there each time and his stories are incredible. Like those are other ways that I would let you know what it is, but for the most part, I would talk about how remarkable his story is and the things that like I took from it. See how we would talk about yeah, it, right? And, and it's like, your readers are organic salespeople. Like the fans of your book will be organic. Like they're not pitching your book onto their friends. It's just a conversation that they're like, I love this book. I got this thing from this book. Right, so here's another one. This book, you probably haven't heard of this book. It's called The Neon Bible by John Kennedy Toole. And so I, this is the way I recommend this book. I say something like, this book taught me how to write. It is the best book I've ever read uh, about expressing really complicated, deep emotions, and it does it in such a simple way. Uh, it blew me away. He, he, he was 16. 16 when he wrote this for an <laughs> essay contest at his school. But see how that, like, like, that's not marketing copy. Like, that's actually what I really think about the book. It is insanely good. It's called The Neon Bible. So it, it can be difficult I'd imagine for an average author to like really get into the heads of people in the future talking about their book. Are there some like shortcuts or hacks they can do to actually figure this out and have it be grounded in reality? Yes. I just say what do people tell you um, that you do that helps them? Tell me what do they say? Right? And so like they'll say oh of course and then they just rattle something off and like there, it's right there. there. There is a place for marketing copy and there's a place for advertising copy, uh, but it's not in thinking about what your idea is. Well, You've gotta have also, the core idea first before you start trying to write up the pitch and the selling points. Does that make sense? Totally, and it's, it's almost more than that, or deeper than that of like this feeling of insecurity. Is this book important enough? Right. Is it big enough? Yeah and that can lead them down a, a weird path. Right. Instead of what you should be, what they need to, what authors need to be thinking of, does this book solve an actual problem, provide an actual benefit to a real person who wants that? If the answer is yes, then it's, it's a great book idea and you could totally write it and people will recommend it. Some of the best books that Scribe has done as a company have been books that are very narrow, that like, that really only apply to maybe five or 10,000 people. But for those five or 10,000 people, the book is absolute game changer. Our first, the iconic example I always use is our very first client, Melissa Gonzalez. She wrote a book explaining how to use pop-up retail to build a brand. I couldn't imagine a universe where I would ever wanna read that book, right? 
But for a certain type of person, that's like a huge big deal. And, and she's probably sold maybe a thousand copies, but it's been totally game-changing for her. 